Welcome. Welcome to the last day of the adult spring break blitz. Okay. Now I know if you've been watching these videos, you might be thinking, I don't know, this, this woman takes too long to get to the point. Like, I just want to figure out how to get organized. I just want to figure out what bins I need. I just want to get this project done. And I hope the one thing that you will take away from these five videos is the fact that getting organized is actually a process of decluttering and then organizing. And today we're going to talk about increased productivity. So all the way back on day one, when we started our adult spring break, we spent the majority of the time planning. So we used these two sheets and we went in and we picked one space that we were going to cover for the next five days. And I just told you to plan and think and dream and make lists about what this space could be for you. We talked about your master bedroom or a kid's bedroom, your closet and a garage. And we talked about right now we're in the middle of a quarantine. So your master bedroom may be functioning as a home office. And I wanted you to go ahead and embrace that. And then we started on day one and these printables will look the same for days uh, two through four on day two. We looked at our space and we started getting into action and we did decluttering. And then on day three, printable looks similar was our hump day. It was the day where we were in the messy middle and oh, we have more to go than we have that's already finished. And I don't know if I want to keep this or I don't want to keep this. And I counseled you to actually keep it. We want to keep more than we actually declutter and that this was the hardest day. This was the longest day to get through. And then on day four, in our third day of decluttering and organizing, this is where you started to pick up momentum yesterday and you got done. You got done going through the closet. You got done going through the bedroom. You got done going through the garage. And we talked about how you were starting to put some organizational elements into place. And I talked to you about how decluttering and organizing doesn't cost any money and you usually don't need to buy any products. When you buy products is today. Today in increasing productivity, that's when you actually decide what products you're going to buy or if you need to change the spaces inside of your home. So we planned on Monday, we decluttered on Tuesday, we decluttered and organized on Wednesday, we did a little bit more decluttering and more organizing on Thursday, which leads to productivity today. Now productivity takes us all the way back to day one. It's all about dreaming and planning. Now that you've decluttered, now that you've kind of organized your space, maybe you're like, ooh, a shoe wall in the garage, that's a great idea. Or hanging, I wanna hang all of my shirts according to color or according to the sleeve length or whatever. Like you've done some basic organizing inside of your closet. I wanna really talk to you about the purpose of each room that you're organizing, what that serves for you and how to make it productive. Because every space in your house and everything that you organize will end up more productive at the end if you take this extra time. Usually we skip Monday and we skip Friday and we only do Tuesday to Thursday. We go in a space, we're overwhelmed, we declutter as much as possible, we get stuck in the messy middle. If we're good, we push through all the way to the end and we finish the decluttering process and we put everything back where it looks cute and maybe we even got some bins, but we don't take this extra step of today to really think about what is the purpose of that space back from day one, has it fulfilled that purpose and how can we add more productivity? The easiest place for me to see this is inside of my master closet because it is the space that I have organized more than any other space in my house. You know, you walk in your closet and you're like, oh, how come there's nothing to wear in here? Like there are so many clothes. How come there's nothing to wear? Especially after you deep clean and declutter your closet and you get rid of so many bags of clothes, you think, okay, when I go in on Monday, surely everything that's in this closet, I'm going to love and I'm going to want to put on. And usually this is not the case. This is for a couple of reasons. It took me three times through my master closet and 18 months to get to the point where when I walked into my closet, 80% of what was in there, I actually wanted to put on. The reason why is because even though you've decluttered a ton and you've moved bags of clothing out of your closet, you didn't move enough out. And you didn't move enough out just because your brain can't handle it. Like you probably wear only 20% of what's in your closet, but your brain can literally not handle you getting rid of 80% of your clothing all at once. Like it seems wasteful. Uh, it's way too much guilt. What if you're going to need it? Like you mentally can't handle it. So you probably got through somewhere around 20, maybe 30%. That's the most 
anybody ever gets rid of even with a professional organizer maybe you get rid of 40 percent but you just it's it's too big of a shift you can't get rid of that much more so now when you go in your closet if you got rid of 20 percent now maybe 40 percent of what's in your closet you love and 60 percent is meh or you're not going to wear it six months from now when you do this again in the fall you get through another you get rid of another 20 percent now about 40 maybe 60 percent of what's in your closet you'll want to wear when you do it one year from now and you get rid of another 20 percent now about 80 percent of what's in your closet you're going to want to wear and then six months again later so a year from this fall when you organize your closet for the fourth time your closet will be very similar to mine there is maybe two or three pieces of clothing at all in my entire closet if you forced me to go in and put every single thing on in my closet i'd put it on and walk out in it and it took me two years to get to that point so part of getting organized is you have to do it cyclically there is no one and done this is a process of learning to live an organized life and you are growing your organizational muscles now what does productivity look like in your closet so you've gotten rid of some not enough but some now you're going to reorder that's the organizing shirts here pants here i'm going to move spring and summer out i'm going to move winter to the back of the closet whatever that's organizing increasing productivity is reducing the amount of hours that you spend in your closet going what am i gonna wear to knowing what you're going to wear you could do this one of two ways number one you could pretend like you are in grade school and your mom wants you to lay out your clothes the night before so when you're getting ready for bed check the weather tomorrow figure out what the weather is going to be and pick out your outfit for the next day and hang it somewhere else like hang it in the front of your closet hang it on a hook in the in the bathroom whatever when you get up the next day you will no longer be thinking walking in there going what am i going to wear wasting five to 15 minutes staring at your closet but more important than the time you're wasting decision making ability you only have statistically it's been proven we can only make so many decisions every single day and we're wasting them in our closet like we do not need to use our brain juice on what we're going to wear today at the end of the day when your brain juice is already gone and you're already eating the ho-ho and you're watching netflix you might as well pick out what you're going to wear tomorrow because it's not a high decision save all that decision making ability to figure out what are we going to do now that we're stuck at home and the economy is crashing your brain power is better used for that than what color turtleneck you're going to wear tomorrow i know see i've got one on my aunt doesn't like it when i wear turtlenecks i know nobody wears turtlenecks i'm not saying i'm a fashion plate i'm just saying i knew that i was going to wear this outfit last night so pick out your outfit the night before as you get better at this try picking out a whole week my goal and i only do this about once every maybe six weeks so I, I don't do it all the time but my goal is to pick out my whole week's worth of clothing on sunday night i take a long bath on sunday i do all like my little spa treatments i watch extra tv shows on sunday i would like to get to the point where i can lay out all of my clothes for the next week i look at my calendar i look at the weather and when i do that my week just flies like this i feel great in what i'm wearing i don't have to make any decisions all week long that is how you increase productivity in your closet so let's talk about how do you increase productivity in your bedroom and i'm going to specifically address if you work from home and your office is in your bedroom because for seven years i grew organized 365 with my office in my bedroom now i've just moved to my daughter's bedroom that's where i am now um even non-quarantined i'm still in my daughter's bedroom but my desk used to be a t um tv tray and a nice comfy chair like that that's what i worked on for the first 18 months then i graduated to a card table for the next 18 months then finally i bought a wooden desk and eventually i bought this ikea seven foot desk that i have now so literally when you walked in our bedroom when you walked in it looked like a bedroom and if you turned around on that back wall it was a full full office with two printers and scanners and two monitors it was a full office inside of our bedroom and some of you may have that situation going on right now so what does increased productivity look like inside of a bedroom if you have an office in it one of the things i had to train myself to do and it was super painful because i love to work all the time it's my hobby i love to work is i got to the point instead of letting my computer go to sleep when i was done working for the day i would shut my computer down 
And that tiny little change made it so much harder for me at 8.30 to check my email or do one more thing on my website because I had to boot up my computer. And that took about two minutes. And the action of booting it up and typing in my thing and letting everything populate again made me really stop and think, should I be doing work today? Is this really, or tonight, is this really that important? Um, whereas if all I had to do was move my mouse and the computer came back on, I'd be like, I'm just going to check email. I'm just going to do this. Next thing you knew, I'd be working for three hours. So increase productivity in your bedroom, especially if it's functioning as your office right now is what is the clear delineator between nighttime and daytime office? Like as soon as I would get up and I would get dressed, I would make my bed. And then I had this banner that I would extend. And when I extended this banner in my bedroom, it would block the open doorway into the bathroom where you could see the bathtub. So when I was on my Zoom calls, used to be right here, you could see a bathroom. But if I extended this like banner that you would put up at a trade show, you couldn't see that bathtub anymore. So when I got up and I got ready and I made my bed and I extended that banner, that meant now my bedroom was an office and I would work all day long. And then when Greg came home, I would take that banner down and I would turn my computer off, like power it all the way down, which meant the office was closed and the bedroom was open again. Wherever you're working from home, if you're not used to working from home, just those simple things of powering your computer all the way down or putting up a banner or something like that can make the transition from home to work and then from work back to home again. So again, now let's move on to the garage. What does increased productivity look like in the garage? I have mentioned a couple of times that we have one car parked in our garage, even though we can have two. And the reason why I say this so much is because I think it's something like 25% of Americans have two cars parked in their garage. And when I hear that, I'm like, 75% of Americans are failing because they can't park their cars in their garage. Whereas it's a conscious decision that we've decided to have one car parked in our garage and one not. Like, And I want you to say that to yourself as well. Whatever choices you make for yourself, make them. So if you want two cars parked in your garage, but you only have one in, then figure out how to get two cars parked in your garage. But if you're like us and you're like, one is fine or none is fine, and here's why we made that decision, then trust the decision that you've made and don't mentally think every time you pull in your garage, why aren't both cars in here? Why aren't both cars in here? Why aren't both cars in here? That's what happens. We have to declutter the negative thoughts and the unrealistic expectations that we have for these spaces inside of our house as much as we do the physical. So the first day of planning and the last day of increasing your product productivity are about changing your mindset so that you can pull in your garage and have these thoughts like, I don't know why we don't have the second car in here. How come they left this out? Why isn't this working? Or you can pull in your garage every night and go, this is so awesome. This looks great. I'm so glad that I didn't have to walk in through the rain because I'm in my garage. And let me just tell you, it's the exact same garage that you're pulling into. When you pull into your garage, you think of everything that hasn't been done. When you walk into somebody else's garage, you're like, wow, this looks really great. Pretend it's somebody else's garage. So productivity in your garage comes from two things. One, deciding what you want your garage to look like that is a realistic expectation. And two, when you get close to 80% of that, pat yourself on the back as you're walking in out, out of the house all the time versus looking at the 20% that isn't done. We are so used to seeing beautiful pictures inside of Better Homes and Gardens magazine and on websites and in Instagram pictures. And we're like, someday my house is going to like like that. And, my, and I'm telling you, no, it's not. It's totally not. Like I walk downstairs and my first floor, it's not terrible. I could get it picked up in 20 minutes, but it looks like, I don't know, it looks like I have a bunch of toddlers living here, which I don't. But that's just life. Like nobody's house looks like better homes and gardens. I was following a blogger probably about six or seven years ago, and they were actually featured in Better Homes and Gardens. I think that was the magazine. And this house was literally perfect. Like this person lived a per perfect life. Their blog was perfect. Like you opened up their refrigerator. I don't even know how people do this, but you open up their refrigerator and like everything was labeled and in clear bins and in the, in the freezer, everything was like up like this and, and labeled and First of all, how much time can that possibly take every single, my, my refrigerator looks like a bomb went off. I'll show you a picture on Instagram today. I mean, my first floor looks terrible. My refrigerator looks terrible. 
But if my mother-in-law came over in an hour, I could get everything picked up. You know what I mean? But if she wants to go in the refrigerator, she's going to know that not so good. My pantry, I mean, like it's organized, but it doesn't look great. So anyway, she had, her home was literally in a magazine. And what I thought was so fascinating was when they went to take pictures of her literally perfect home, they moved her stuff out and they moved other stuff in and they rearranged things and they added things in order to get their perfect pictures. And I thought, oh my gosh, well, if the perfect home doesn't even make it into the magazine as the perfect home and they still edit it before they even shoot it and then they Photoshop the edits, what are we trying? What are you trying to prove? What, what standard are you trying to meet? Nobody lives like that. Nobody, nobody lives like that. So you've got to reduce your you have got to reduce your stress, reduce your expectations on yourself, give yourself grace, make it work. We're stuck at home for crying out loud. Not everybody has the same cleanliness standards in your house or pickup standards in your house. Pick one space that at the end of the day is always picked up to your satisfaction, your bedroom. Maintain your bedroom the way you want your bedroom to be maintained and then work out from there. Okay, one more story I'm going to leave you with, which I've said many times on the podcast. If you don't know, I have a podcast called Organize 365. It's very similar to this live stream. If you like this, you would probably like that. Greg and I went to clean and organize the house. This was probably like 15 years ago. So the kids were, I don't know, like four and five years old or something like that. They might have been younger. And the whole entire house needed to be cleaned and organized. You know, clean the toilets, vacuum, straighten everything. So every single space in the house. And Greg got started in the kitchen. And I said, no, no, no. We do the kitchen and the family room last. He's like, well, I'm going to get started here. I was like, fine, do whatever you want. So he picked up the family room and then he got started in the kitchen. I went upstairs, cleaned the bathrooms. I vacuumed. I picked up all the bedrooms. I came down. I dusted and vacuumed the living room and dining room. And by the time I got back into the kitchen, he's like, oh my gosh, the family room is a mess again. I said, right. If you want to have your entire house cleaned and organized, then the living spaces are the last you do with young children because they undo everything that you're doing all the time. So why wouldn't they be undoing what you're doing as you're cleaning and organizing? But if I put the kitchen and family room to last and I do the whole upstairs and I make the kids stay downstairs and then I push them over to the living room or the family room and I do the living room and dining room and then I keep them in the family room while I do the kitchen, then by the time I get to the family room, my entire house is cleaned and organized. I'm like, clean up, we're all gonna clean up. And then we put everything away. I quickly vacuum the family room and then I get the kids out of the house. Like we went and we played outside or we went to the park or we did whatever, which I know you can't do right now, but you know what I'm saying. And then Greg said, wow, the whole house is cleaned and organized. I said, yes, because I started up here where the kids weren't and then I chased them into the one place where all their toys were and then I picked their toys up last. The order in which you do this matters. Taking the day to plan and think matters and then do the decluttering, decluttering, organizing, organizing, and then the last day is the most important day. You may think, well, she's not giving me anything actionable to do. Yes, I'm giving your brain actionable things to do and thinking about how your spaces work and thinking about what phase of life your family is and thinking about how your family needs this home to function is the most important part because that will give you the solutions for, oh, I need to buy a shoe wall. Oh, I need to we need to invest in a desk. We need to we need to make this work for our family. If you have liked these five videos and you're like, okay, that is a totally different way of thinking about organizing. I do not teach you how to put things in containers. I don't even teach you what containers you need. I teach you to think about your spaces differently and then grow your organizational muscles, decluttering and then organizing and then increasing productivity. If you've liked, liked these lives, you will definitely like the podcast, so go find that and download that. And then I have a masterclass coming up on Tuesday called, oh, what is it called? <laughs> um, the Right Way to Declutter for Increased Productivity, kind of what I just talked you through, only I'm going to talk about how do you do that for your whole house? How do you do that for your whole life? How do we start with your actionable to-dos and eliminating your kitchen counter pile with the Sunday basket and then moving through your entire living spaces of your house in the 100 day program and then in into all access. I will tell you my organization story, how I got started, how I created the 100 day program, why each piece builds on the last. So if you haven't done anything, you're going to start with the Sunday basket. If you have a Sunday basket, I'll explain the 100 day. If you've already been in that, I'll tell you why all access 
is next and why I have it in those orders and why that works. So that is Tuesday at one. Again, there'll always be a replay, but you can go to organize365.com slash masterclass to sign up. And then if you're just hearing this for the first time and you're like, I don't even know what the adult spring break blitz is, just go to organize365.com slash blitz and there you'll be able to download the printables and you can watch these videos on replay over on the YouTube channel. We'll have all of those up by tonight so you can go through and watch all of them again. If you want to try a week of the 100 day free, if you're like, okay, so this has been great. I wonder what it looks like inside of that 100 day program, then sign up for the free week and we'll take you through the laundry room. Just go to organize365.com slash try 100. This has been so much fun for me. I hope it has been fun for you. The next blitz that I will do is in the middle of June and that will be our back to school blitz. And here's hoping that's what we're actually doing at the middle of July. All right, guys, thank you so much.